Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. According to a new report, scientists are now on the verge of deciphering the mystery of dark matter. Researchers working with data from the Planck satellite have detected an intense form of radiation called synchrotron radiation from the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Scientists at the Niels Bohr Institute have interpreted these radiation emissions as evidence of dark matter. Professor Pavel Naselski says of the discovery, We know from theoretical predictions that the concentration of dark matter particles around the center of galaxies is very high, and we have a strong argument they can collide there and in the collision, electrons and positrons are formed. These electrons and positrons start to rotate around the magnetic field at the center of the galaxy, and in doing so, produce this very unusual synchrotron radiation. But is this really a plausible explanation for synchrotron radiation in space? Astrophysicists have found from observation that various results that they, that they come up with demand that there be more matter in galaxies, for example, than they actually observe. And so they postulate dark matter to allow their results to all be explained by gravitation alone. In a sense, you could say that before it was observed, Uranus was dark matter because its position was postulated purely by gravitational theory, and then they found it. So before it was found, it was in a sense dark matter, but they're taking this to ridiculous extremes now. But it's the same sort of argument that they're using. Here we've got some results, we need more actual matter to explain them, so it, it must be there, it's just that we can't see it. You can't see dark matter, dark matter is invisible, and it's invented to save the theory. So wherever they see something that doesn't fit the theory, they can always put some dark matter there, and then it'll make the theory fit what they see. So dark matter is kind of a blank check that they can write for it. whenever the theory fails, they can write a check for dark matter and then they'll say, oh, this, this proves it. There, there's a circularity to it, that we prove the existence of dark matter because we assumed it was where it needed to be. Emissions of synchrotron radiation have long posed an unsolved mystery for mainstream astrophysicists. The mystery resides in the spectacular acceleration of charged particles beyond anything astronomers had anticipated in space. Synchrotron radiation is uh, basically radiation that's given off by charged particles that are spiraling in a magnetic field. And technically, it refers to x-rays from particles that are moving near the speed of light. But if you have particles that are moving much less than the speed of light, they still give off radiation, it's just at a lower energy level, so it's radio instead of x-ray. The problem that astrophysicists have is that they have this taboo against electricity in space. And so in order to get the charged particles to spiral in the magnetic fields, they have to do it with some mechanical means, which is usually collisions. So they, metaphorically, they bang rocks together to get electricity. If if it were up to them, I guess they would light street lights with, by falling rocks. Astrophysicists mostly just ignore the synchrotron radiation. Once in a while they'll admit it, like this time, when, oh, there's synchrotron radiation at the core of the Milky Way. Wonder how many rocks we have to bang together to get that. The discovery of synchrotron radiation fulfilled the prediction of plasma physicist Hannes Alfane as early as 1950. Alphane claimed that electric currents moving inward along the arms of the Milky Way would generate stupendous electric discharge and synchrotron radiation would be its defining signature. Alphane's first insight back in, I guess, in the 20s was that plasma responds to magnetic fields and he had this idea that if you have a perfect conductor, the magnetic field will become frozen into it. And so astronomers assume that any plasma in space will be a perfect conductor and the magnetic field is frozen in and any charge separation will be immediately canceled when the charges come back together. So you can't have sustained electric fields in space. Well, Alphane 
repudiated that. His further experiments showed that plasma isn't a perfect conductor and that it has a small resistance and that it does sustain electric fields. The uh, experiments since then and in space have shown that plasma is extensively electrically active. If especially if you have two clouds of plasma moving relative to each other, they will induce electric fields and electric currents in each other. So then you get all the effects of electrified plasma, the Birkeland currents and filamentation, magnetic fields, double layers, and especially acceleration of charged particles and synchrotron radiation. The electromagnetic effects in the universe have got to be brought to the forefront in the researches of all astrophysicists. They've got to be alongside gravitation, if you like. They've got to realize that, yes, gravitation accounts for a lot and tells us a lot, but what about these electromagnetic forces? These ideas have been around. We've got the work of Birkeland, followed up by Alfred, and then again in more modern times by Anthony Peratt, where they've got all this theory They've got all these experiments to back it up. Not mathematical theory, just. They've got experiments to back it up. This stuff has to come through. I'm not saying gravitation doesn't have a role to play, but they're not going to explain things if they don't bring in the electromagnetic force. For continuous updates on space news from the electric universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.